so good to see everybody tonight. Go with me, if you would, to Mark chapter uh, 16. And we're going to just keep going on a new series. I was really enjoying the last series that we were in. We were talking about the Holy Spirit and uh, faith and just different, different, different things that we covered in that series. But um, I just couldn't get away from this drawing to um, minister about the name of Jesus. The yes. name of Jesus. How precious is that name. Amen. There's no greater name. And you know, I think, um, you know, even though we're covering a lot of things that probably most of us know or most of us have heard, I, there's just something about it when you feed on a truth. You know, you take a truth that you know and you just, you just kind of dig down into it and you just keep digging down into it and you just keep digging down into it and digging down into it. It, 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 it really... It really places a mark on, on your spirit and on your conscience. When, when you live your day-to-day -day life, you know, it's, it's like that uh, illustration that people give about the sponge. You know, what you're full of when you're squeezed will come out. When you, when you feed on the power that's in the name of Jesus, watch out devil. Because when things come against you, it's almost automatic when you feed on a truth like this. I mean, it's like the authority of the name of Jesus. It's just so real to you because you see it in Scripture after Scripture after Scripture. Don't you love that about the Bible? People that say that the Bible contradicts itself don't read it. They don't read it. Because if you study it, it confirms itself again and again and again and again and again. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. And we see these truths about the power and the authority and the superiority of the name of Jesus again and again and again. And we also see that it's been given to the church. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To use in life. And so I'm just, I'm just so uh, thankful that the Holy Spirit has led us here to this place because I'm being ministered to, believe me, as we study these things. And uh, there's, just, there's some more. We're not going to finish tonight. We've got some more uh, Wednesdays that we're going to uh, cover some more ground on this. But I just think it's a good thing because, you know, <clears throat> we should be, especially in this hour, and folks, we are so close. We are so close to the coming of the Lord. When you see what's happening around us and you read Matthew 24 and you read other scriptures, I mean, it, it's almost, it almost takes your breath away. You know, uh, I don't want to get off into the weeds, but you know, all of this AI, you know, artificial intelligence stuff, that's in the end times. Not being able to buy or sell without... The mark of the beast. You know, that's, that's one of the things that people always used to question. Well, you know, how could, um, uh, here I go, you know, how could, how could, you know, people uh, not sell to someone, a family, not sell them groceries or without the mark of the beast? Well, artificial intelligence doesn't have a conscience. You know what I'm saying? And you see all, everything about the digital currency and all that. I'm telling you, we are so close to Jesus coming back. Hallelujah. Oh, we've got to keep that in front of us that we've got to be about the Father's business. We've got to be about preaching Jesus to the world. We've got to be about exalting the name of Jesus. We've got to be about making much of Jesus, hallelujah. More than anything, yes. we got to build the kingdom. More than anything, we've got to share our faith. I tell you, get over that intimidating spirit that tries to keep you from sharing the gospel with people. Go, somebody's got to break the ice here and step out and tell people about who he is and about what he's done. And I'm telling you, you might be surprised how many open hearts there are today. 
because people can feel that something's right. different. People can feel that something's changing. People can feel that we're coming to the end of this age. They can sense it. Right. And the Holy Spirit is drawing them to people like you and me who have the answer. Hallelujah. And if you don't know what else to give them, just give them Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, my, I, I want to put a billboard out on all of these, all of these uh, freeways that just says, call on the name of Jesus and you shall be saved. Because that's all you got to do. Hallelujah. Is call on His name and you will be saved. Hallelujah. So we want to make much of the name of Jesus. I, I know you're over in Mark, but I want to read just a couple of scriptures. I thought this was good. Psalms 34 and 3. It says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. Hallelujah. That's what we were doing during worship. Exalting his name together. We need to be doing that more and more and more as a family, as church family. Amen. Exalting the name of Jesus. Amen. And then we looked at this um, in the last couple of uh, Wednesdays, Romans 10 and 13. I'll just do a little bit of review. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, there's power in the name of Jesus and in the name of Jesus alone to save. No other name can save. Romans 10, let me just read you some scriptures. Romans 10 and 9, it says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus... What did Jesus say? He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Jesus is the only way to the Father. You know, you've got to be real watchful in this hour. There's a lot of, uh, of that secular gospel being preached. You hear it everywhere. Well, you know, all we need is love. We just need to love one another. And they take Jesus completely out of the equation as to what's necessary for salvation. That is heresy. That is doctrines of devils. Love cannot save you, but the name of Jesus can. Amen. You got to be real watchful because it sounds so good. Yeah, well, it'll send you to hell. It'll send you to hell if you take Jesus out of the equation. Hallelujah. You must be born again. You must call on the name of Jesus. It says that Romans 10 and 9, I'll, I'll finish it. It says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Do y'all love this or what? Yes. I mean, we got to remind ourselves that this is in here sometimes. It says... It says, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Acts 4 and 12 says, for there is none other name. How many? Zero. None. Uh, under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So no other name that you call on. This doctrine that any God will do is false. Buddha can't save you. Muhammad's name can't save you. Love can't save you. Nature can't save you. Oh, I just, you know, like to be in the trees and that's how I relate to God. Well, that'll send you to hell. I like trees too and dirt roads and you know I'm from the country I get it but I'm saved and I relate to God amen how about that I called on the name of Jesus and I enjoy nature but my way to God is through Jesus Christ yes. why well Acts 2 38 says this Peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. 
See, what Jesus did on the cross, his blood, his sinless blood being poured out for us was the only thing that could remit our sin. That's it. And so you have to call on his name and his name, praise God, has the power to save. Glory to God. And then we talked about this, that that word uh, saved is the word sozo. It's the word that, you know, uh, includes more than just eternal life with God. Salvation has a broader definition than you being born again and uh, not going to hell. That word sozo is inclusive of your protection. It's inclusive of your deliverance. It's inclusive of your restoration in life from things that have maybe come against you. It's, it's inclusive of, of, of healing. Hallelujah. It's inclusive of all those things. So whoever calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved, delivered, healed, restored. Hallelujah. Protected, kept, rescued. Come on, somebody. See, that's why we've got to lift up His name. That's why, you know, the reality of Jesus needs to be seen to the world. They need to know that there is a Savior, glory to God, that they can call upon. And He's not, you know, I think sometimes people have that uh, idea. I think there's a song, a weird song about it, about, you know, how God's so far away. You know, it's just so far out there. You know, somewhere out there is a God. No, my friend, He's near to you. When you call on His name, glory to God, He is right there to perform what you've called on Him to do in your life. Glory to God! Hallelujah! This isn't fairy tales and magic dust and things like this. It's a kingdom that we belong to. Glory to God. And it's not a kingdom that's just way out there and we don't know what's going on. No, it's a kingdom. Glory to God that we can be a part of. Come on. That we're included in. And blessings flow and goodness flows and grace flows and health flows from that kingdom into our lives through the goodness of our God and by calling on the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Aren't you thankful for that? Man, I look around and I'm thinking, I'm thankful that this ain't just it for me. Because the future of this realm looks bleaker and bleaker by the day. Nations in distress, no answers for anything, but I have no fear. No fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, have no, I have no despair in me whatsoever because I know that my God is making a way for me. I know that my God is increasing me. I know that my God is blessing me. I know that I have a Savior. His eye is on the sparrow. His eye is on those that can't even call on Him. How much more, how much more is His eyes on us? Yes. Hallelujah. Man. Yes. So Praise good. the Lord. So we need to make much, make much of Jesus in our lives and, and to the world. Amen. And then this is the point that we left off of um, last week where we've, we've been on this that we've been given the name of Jesus to use we've been given as the church the name of Jesus to use and I wrote down a few things that we have the right see this is a right Well, how could you say that well we'll show you in the scriptures that we have the right to use that name against our enemies we have the right to use it in our prayers and in our petitions. We have the right to use it in our praises and in our worship unto God. We have the right to use it to minister to people. That name belongs to you. 
That name belongs to you. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, over here in Mark chapter uh, 16, you get anything out of this tonight? Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, Mark 16 and verse 15, here is where Jesus authorized us, authorized and delegated the authority of that name to us, his followers, his believers. And you think about, I was just kind of meditating on this. I thought, you know, that name, when you speak it, it's automatically recognized in, in a realm that you see, but in realms that you don't see. It's recognized in three realms. You know, um, how many last night heard the, the earthquake? Did you, anybody hear the earthquake? Yeah, it was like around 11.30 last night. And it was one that was more heard than felt. Have you ever, had those, you ever been in those earthquakes where, you know, you can hear them more than you can feel them rattling you? And, and last night I was laying in bed. It was about 11.30, 11.45, something like that. And I could hear it. It sounded like a train coming towards my house. But I recognized it right away. And I thought to myself, that's how the name of Jesus is. Yes. Don't you know that it thunders through hell? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, come on. come on. Don't you know that that name literally thunders in heaven? I mean, it's like an explosion goes off when you speak that name. It's so full of anointing. It's so full of power. It is so full of authority. And it's recognized, and we see that in Philippians, it's recognized in all three realms, in heaven, in earth, and under the earth. Hallelujah. But Mark 16, this is, this is where Jesus... Uh, one place where he delegated authority to us, he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now look at verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that... Believe. That's important to note. He's not speaking here to the apostles. He's speaking here to who? He's speaking to believers. Well, I just think, you know, that sounds ridiculous that, you know, you, you, you think that you can use His name. Well, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Are you, are you calling Jesus a liar? I mean, if you're bold enough to call Jesus a liar, you need some prayer. You need some prayer. Because it says right here, He spoke to them, the believers, and He said, These signs shall follow them that believe. We have believed on Him, right? We believe in the power and the authority of His name. That's important. That's important. See, faith is recognized in that realm. Remember the seven sons of Sceva? You know, they're, they're, they're trying to cast out evil spirits in the name of Jesus. And they spoke back to him. They said, Paul, we know. <laughs> Jesus, we know. But who are you? Why? Because they were using the name without any revelation. They were using that name without any faith or confidence in that name. But see, we believe in the name of Jesus, amen, and we use the name of Jesus. And then the things that are listed here happen in our lives. Amen. And so we see the first thing, and we, we, were, we were here last week. He said... These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Here it is. We've been authorized to use the name. In my name, they shall cast out 
devils. That's the first sign that follows believers. That's the first sign that follows believers that we can take the authority of the name of Jesus and exercise that authority against devils, against demons, against Satan, and we can cast them out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because they understand authority. And the name of Jesus, I'm just going to read it to you. Is it okay if I just do a little bit of review here? This is why they have to go. Philippians 2, 9. Wherefore God has highly exalted Him, Jesus, given Him a name which is above every name. Here it is, that at the name of Jesus, this is what happens, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in the earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Demons have to bow to that name. It also says that they have to confess. I'm going to love that day. The devil's going to have to say it. The devil is going to have to say it. Every demon in hell is going to have to say it. Oh, man, are we in for a fun time. Hallelujah. Heaven just got funner when I think about this. I think I'm going to raise my hand and say, Lord... I didn't hear him. <laughs> say it again. Could you make him say it again? <laughs> what? What? I didn't hear it. <laughs> He's going to have to say it. They have to bow. They have to go. And when you exercise that authority in the name, see, you can't use your name. You can't use anything other than the name of Jesus, and it has the power. Amen. And the enemy, we talked about this last week, that the, the, the kingdom of darkness, it's set up like a kingdom, so they understand authority. The devil is the prince of the power of the air, and then you have the subordinates. You've got everybody that submits to him. It's a kingdom. And so... This, this, this was revelation to me because I was raised Pentecostal and the way we dealt with the devil or um, anything from the kingdom of darkness coming against us is we tried to pray it away. Yep. Anybody relate to that? I'm just going to pray the devil away. Well, you can't. You can't pray the devil away, but you can cast him out in the name of Jesus. You can exercise authority over him, and you can tell him to stop what he's doing. Well, I'm just going to pray that God will just get him out of my life. Well, God ain't going to do that. God ain't going to do that. Do you know that there's rules to spiritual things? Just like salvation. What's the rule? What's the rule? With salvation, you got to call on Jesus, right? Well, when it comes to dealing with the enemy, there is a, a way that God has set it up. And even though your intentions in your heart might be good for you to try to do it any other way, it's just not going to work. We've got to deal with the enemy and deal with demons the way the Bible says to. And what does it say here to do? It says to... Cast them out. Amen. Amen. Um, go to Mark chapter 5. I hope y'all are getting something out of this. Last week, we were over in Acts 16, and we were, we were talking about um, dealing with the Spirit itself that's operating against you. Remember with Paul... 
Remember over in Acts 16, they're, they're ministering, you know, and trying to, have, trying to have a good meeting, and you've got this demon-possessed girl that's um, interrupting and uh, being inspired by a wrong spirit with her behavior and the things that she's saying. And the Bible says that after many days, after many days, Paul finally dealt with it. And it says, this, I'm just going to read it to you, it says that he said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her, and he came out the self same hour. And so, you know, that is how you deal with the devil, is you, you, don't, you don't come against the person that's being influenced, but you deal with the Spirit behind it. And there's not a devil behind everything. You know, that's the people get in one ditch or the other one. Have you ever found that to be true? You got people that, you know, don't don't believe that any of this stuff is real. You know, you have Christians don't, you know, just think you're a quack for believing in the Holy Spirit and believing that you have authority in the name of Jesus. And you know, they don't even think that there's any demonic activity happening at all. They just you know what I mean? They're just unaware of all that. And then you have people in the other side of the ditch, and everything's a devil. Everything's a devil. You know, they're just devil. I remember one time <laughs> I, was, I was walking through Walmart, and I stepped in a puddle of water, and I fell. And I was laughing about it, and somebody told me, they go, the devil's trying to take you out. I said, no, it's just life. You know what I mean? It's just life. Like, water fell. I was looking around, I guess, at the falling prices or whatever, and I ended up falling down on the floor. I don't know, you know, just life. But sometimes you, you do discern by the Spirit of God that uh, there is demonic activity or an evil spirit's behind it. You know, when, when the devil's coming against the... Or, or, or when things are coming against the church and and trying to hinder the church, that's always an evil spirit. You know what I'm saying? And there's just times that you can discern that. And so what you need to do is you need to deal with the spirit behind that. Now, I know sometimes, sometimes even a spirit can be working or influencing somebody, and you actually need the Holy Spirit to tell you. Because, you know, some people think that if somebody's not foaming at the mouth, that you know, they're not being influenced by an evil spirit, but many times they are. And if you don't deal with it the way the Bible teaches you to by using the name of Jesus, it'll just go on and on and on. And this scripture, we talked about it last week, Ephesians 4.27, it says, Neither give place to the devil. See, if you just let it go on and on and on and on, you're the one giving it place. That word place there, another translation says foothold. And actually that word, what it really means, that word place, I love this, it means toehold. Just the devil just getting his toe, get his big old ugly toe in there. And you just let it, you know, just out of, I don't know, maybe just spiritual, I don't know, apathy or whatever, you just don't deal with it. And all the while, the devil is getting place, the devil is getting a foothold, and he's not satisfied with just having his toe in, believe me. He'll just keep moving forward and gaining more ground until you deal with it. Well, I'm just going to pray that God will deal with him. Well, he won't. I know people have a hard time with that. Listen, I came out of religion... And I heard this very same message, and it was, I was astonished at some of the scriptures that we're going to share tonight because I'm thinking, that just can't be true. Because God has all the power. Who am I to deal with the devil? Well, I tell you who you are. You are the one that he authorized to use his name. Yes, yes God has the power, but he gave that authority to you. It just makes me nervous. Well, you don't have to fear. You don't have to be afraid of 
of the devil. See, that's the problem. You need to be more conscious of the victory that you have in Christ Jesus. You need to be more conscious of who you are in Christ than just looking at yourself and, and being, you know, I'm just a human, I don't know, I'm just a worm, I'm just this, I'm just nothing. No, when you use the name of Jesus, it's just like Jesus standing in front of the devil and he's reminded of his defeat. He's reminded of how Jesus stripped him. I wish I could get a friend in here. This is good preaching. This is stuff that will get the devil off your back. Amen. Luke 10, let me just read. I know y'all are over in Mark. Isn't that where you're at? Mark 5? I'm coming. But, but let, me, let me read this to you. Luke 10, 19 and 20. It says, Behold, I give unto you power. Who? You. That word power there is translated what? Authority. This is, this, is, this is what God is saying to His church. I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. And, or no, he goes on to say, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. Come on now, who are they subject to? Well, I'm just a little nobody. Well, not in the kingdom. He said, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Jesus right here said that evil spirits are subject to you. The, the New Living says, but don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. So the emphasis isn't that we have you know, authority and that's it. Really our, our, our rejoicing is in that we're saved. You understand what I mean? But Jesus said it right there. They obey you. They're subject to you. See, this, this is how this works. Jesus won the victory on our behalf. He had victory. He didn't need it. Right? He was doing just fine. He decided to get involved with our problem in that we were cursed, in that the devil was running over us, <laughs> and we had no ability to stop it. So he came to this earth in our place, hallelujah, defeated the devil, and then he goes, I'm going back to my father, but here, here is my name. Here is my name. And devils and demons and the devil, they're, they're subject to you. Occupy till I come. I'm coming back, but until I come back, don't let the devil run over you. Don't let him throw stuff at you and hurt you. You can take authority over him. Hallelujah. And cast him out. If you find him under a rock, cast him out. If you see him walking down your sidewalk, cast him out. I'm not going to put up with the devil. He's like a snake in the house. The other day we had a snake in the garage. Well, don't kill it. Honey, every snake in my house is a dead one. Well, they kill rats. Well, there's sticky paper for that. There's a whole section down at Lowe's and Home Depot. 
I don't need a snake in my house to kill the rats. Right? I can handle that myself. I volunteer to deal with that myself. But the devil is like that. If you find him, you need to cast him out. You need to send him on down the road. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I know you're in Mark. Um, I, I, I really feel led to kind of just touch on this a little bit. Won't stay very long on this, but you know, over there in Acts 16, we see where that, that young girl was possessed with the devil. And Paul spoke to that spirit and he said, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. As Christians, we don't really have to deal with um, demon possession in our own life. I'm going to talk just a little bit about the oppression, how to deal with oppression, because that's an evil spirit. That is an evil spirit. And that is the way the enemy likes to come against you. That is the way that the enemy tries to come against God's people is he brings this oppressive spirit against us. And it, I'm telling you, it's happening in, in, in Christian people's lives. It's happening to our kids. It's happening everywhere in society. And Acts 10, and I'm, and I'm sure you've heard me preach this before, Acts 10, 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, I love this, and with power. Our God is a God of power. Yes, he is. I mean, it's exciting to me that we're on the cusp of the greatest move of God this world has ever seen, and this world is about to see that our God has power. Yes, 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 yes. I know it, and you know it. But they're fixing to know it. Hallelujah. The whole world is about to know that he's a God of power. <laughs> I just love that. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And so there's, a, there's an oppressive type of activity an oppressive type spirit that the devil will try to bring against us you know it's 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 like a it's like a heaviness it's like a uh it's like a darkness even you know what it's a it's a harassment and a torment and it has to do a lot with fear now I, I was just kind of meditating on, on, on this this week, and there's just a couple of things I want to share about this. I, I see with what's happening in the world as far as things on the economic front look so uncertain. You know what I mean? Um, you, you've got people that are fearing. And being oppressed in their mind with fearful thoughts like, you know, how am I going to make it? How am I going to, you know, uh, feed my family? How am I going to pay my bills? You know, how am I going to prosper in my business? How am I going to, you know, have anything more, you know, or, or increase in, in, in my life? You know, you see... I see, I see these young families that are believing God for homes. I was just so, so blessed that God ministered to our church, uh, you know, Sunday night when, with, when Brother Jerry Seville was here, you know, for people uh, to obtain lands and homes because in the natural, I mean, y'all seen home prices? Right. You know what I mean? Rent. And you've got, you know, some of these young families that think, you know, well, 
my opportunities you know, passed me by because you know, there's no way I could afford such and such. See, that is, let me tell you something, that is a spirit. Let's call it what it is. That is an evil spirit that has come to oppress you. What do we do with evil spirits? You got to cast that out in the name of Jesus. This is where we're at. This is what we're dealing with. This is the things that, you know, I tell you, see, fear, fear affects you. I, I remember years ago, uh, years and years ago, there was a documentary about, about fear and, you know, what it had done to people. There was this guy that just out of the blue, now this, this is, you tell me that this ain't an evil spirit. Out of the blue, one day had this intense fear come upon him about something. He was like a man like in his 30s. Went to bed, this is documented, went to bed, couldn't sleep all night because he was just in turmoil and in torment over this thing. And when he got up the next morning, how many of you have heard this, heard this about, about this before? The next morning, his hair had turned solid white. Wow. Monday, you're brown-headed. Tuesday, solid white. Why? Because of the intensity of fear. See, that's, see fear, fear comes to push you down. Fear comes to change the way you think about your life. Fear comes to oppress and make you heavy. Fear comes to even change your behaviors and to rob you of joy and to rob you of peace. It is a spirit and you need to deal with it instead of going back to bed and putting the covers over your face and turning your phone on mute. Because you just... I'm just having a down day. Well, you're sitting there communing with an evil spirit. Come on. Dining with devils or whatever. This scripture, you get anything out of this? This scripture, this really, this really speaks to me. Listen, the only way to come over that is by you using the authority in the name of Jesus and commanding that that spirit leave you. Amen. 2 Timothy 1.7, y'all know this. For God has not given us the spirit, spirit, spirit of fear. God didn't give you fear. Well, if He didn't give it to you, where do you think it came from? Well, I just don't know if, you know, our, our, you know, if, if we're, we're going to be able to, to have a house, or I don't know if we're going to be able to get a car that we need. Who do you think's giving you those thoughts? And you can't pray them away. And you can't beg God to get him out of your car. You have got to exercise the authority in the name of Jesus and you've got to tell him to stop. He has to obey you. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of Power! Hallelujah! God gave you power. He gave you dunamis power.
power. He gave you Holy Ghost power. Gave you miracle power. And not just that kind of power. We see in Scripture after Scripture after Scripture, He gave you authority power. Authority in the name of Jesus power. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. He loves you. If He did not keep His own Son from you, will He not give you what? All things? He loves you. He's not going to abandon you. He knows how much houses cost. Of power and of love. I love this. And of a sound mind. I have a sound mind. Now I'm going to say this. If you do not understand your authority in the name of Jesus, or if you don't use and exercise the authority that you have in the name of Jesus, there's no way you can have a sound mind in this space and time with the intensity of the attacks and everything going on you have to use that authority to have soundness in your mind amen now i'm just gonna uh well we're just flowing Come on, stay we're with just me. flowing stay with me. um there are times that you have to exercise authority over the devil more than once. You know that Jesus, when he was in the wilderness, the enemy came at him not once, not twice, but three times. And every time... Now, he did this to Jesus. He came against Jesus, and Jesus did what? Resisted him and gave him the Word of God, and he left. But he came back. What did Jesus do? The very same thing. Well, he came back. I, I, now I don't know what to do. Did, do the thing that Jesus did. You just keep resisting him. You just keep standing in the authority that you have. And I'm going to tell you that is how you overcome these kinds of attacks. You know, I remember, um, and I was just... Uh, just praying today and this came to me so I feel like this will minister to somebody years ago I was um, in a car accident now we're talking about that oppressive spirit fear coming to oppress you and casting that out in the name of Jesus that's what we're talking about I was in a car accident that um, in that accident I was injured had to have surgery had to have therapy. I mean, it was just like a big ordeal, scary ordeal. It was a scary accident. Had my kids with me. You know, it was just, it was not a good experience. You know, sometimes you have experiences that are not good in life, right? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes they, you know, we live in a cursed world. We do. We live in a world where there's an enemy to us. And sometimes uh, traumatic even things can happen. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to tell you this. I don't care what's happened to me. I'm not living with torment. Period. I'm not living with no torment in my life. I'm not. You, you, you know, you have to just... You have to just one day figure out what kind of life you want. You want a life with all kinds of baggage? You know, people do that with hurts. You know, I've been hurt. <laughs> well, haven't we all? Stand in line. Take a number. We've all been hurt, disappointed, done wrong, betrayed. life 
But I'm not living with that baggage. I'm just not. I'm not living with the baggage. I'm not living with the baggage of that. I'm not living with the baggage of being offended and bitter towards anybody. And I'm not, not, not living oppressed and pushed down by no devil. That's baggage to me. And so, you know, I get this, I'm in this accident. It took, by the time I had the surgery and the, the therapy and everything, it was five months before I drove again. <laughs> and I get behind the wheel of that car, and I'm telling, have you ever had fear so bad that you feel it? And I'm driving down the road really slow. And the experience of that accident just keeps coming back to me. Anybody ever been there? Just keeps coming back to me and replaying, replaying, replaying. And I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just so scared. And I'm, and I, and I'm thinking, well, you know, I, I'm out here. And I finally pulled over. And I thought, I can't be paralyzed with fear over this. I can't. I got to take my kids to school. I got to go to church. I got to go to the office. Like, I'm not living like this. And that was the scripture, the Holy Spirit. Oh, don't you thankful for the Holy Spirit? God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power love, and a sound mind. And I, out of my mouth... See, you have got to say it. You can't pray the devil away. You can't think the devil away. you got to open your mouth and say it. See, there's something about saying. Saying. Say. See, that's why I fear so bad. That's why I fear so bad. You, you, you know that scripture over in Job where it says, is this okay? Remember, remember Job, I think it's Job 3, where Job said this. He said, the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of has what? It's come to me. And I've always been interested about that, like, what is it about fear that is like a magnet? There's like a magnetism about fear where it just, the very thing you're afraid of, it draws it to you. And the Holy Spirit really opened my eyes to this. He said, it's not so much the magnetism of fear. He said, it's that it gets, fear gets so settled into people that they begin to speak. Remember where he said, take no thought, saying. And so, just like what we understand with faith, you know, our words, our words of faith stir up activity in the heavenlies to where the Holy Spirit begins working for you. Angels! Begin working for you at the word of the Lord. That's how you. That's how you activate them. It's just by speaking words of faith. But fear, when it gets a hold of you, and you begin to speak that out, what happens? It activates demons can't you see that huh. it's true. so fear is not a light thing and when we deal with it in any degree see we can deal with it in all kinds of degrees to where it's turning your hair white all the way over to where you're just bothered. You're bothered 
by prices. Let, let me tell you something about God. He don't run out of money. God doesn't run out. <laughs> we had to pay $4,000 to fix our car, wiped out our savings account. Well, guess what? There's more where that came from. There's more than what you've got now. There's more than what you've had. God has more. And the same faith that got you the other $4,000 is the same faith that'll get you the next. All right. Are you over here in Mark? I think, we, do we have time? I don't even know what time it is. All right. Ah, Mark 5. I just want to show you again how Jesus dealt with evil spirits. And, and this, this story here, Mark 5, and it starts in verse 1, it shows you how demonic influence on somebody's mind affects them. That's why, whether it's fear, whether it's... Uh, you know, just depression, whether it, whatever it is, you, you need to cast it out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's finish this. Mark 5, 1. It says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Look at that. Look how, look how this is affecting him. He's living in a graveyard. See, the devil's got, let me tell you, the devil's got no respect for you. He's got no respect for you. And if he can, he will get you so overcome with whatever it is he's attacking you with and where he wants to get you is to a place where you don't see who you are in Christ, you don't see your authority anymore, you're living in a way that is so demeaning to yourself. Come on now, where you're a child of God and you're in a dark room with the blinds shut and you haven't showered for 10 days. And your hair's all greasy and you know, you just look like trash. That's beneath you to live that way. That he's so disrespectful that he wants you to get to a place where you're not functioning, you're not happy, and where you're not even living like a human being. Animals live like that. Have you ever looked around and seen people that act more like an animal than they do a human being? That's the devil. That's demonic. But there's freedom. Yes. Hallelujah. There's an answer. Yes. That's, why I'm that's why I'm sharing this tonight. So that we won't allow a toehold at the first fearful thought. We jump out of our chair. We go stomp on his toe. Tell him to get off our property in the name of Jesus. Get off my porch. Get out of my lawn. Get off my street. Get out of my neighborhood. Get out of my life. In Jesus' name. I got to hurry. Verse 3. I love this. When he had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him with, with chains because he'd... He'd been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. The fetters just broken in pieces, and neither could any man tame him. And day and night he's in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself. And look at verse 6. When he saw 
Jesus afar off, what did he do? He came and he worshipped him. Why? Because he knew that Jesus had the power to make him free. This is why we lift up Jesus. Because there's something in people that knows that's my answer. Even people that have never even heard the gospel. Just the mention of the name of Jesus. There's something on the inside of them that knows that's who you need. Amen. Oh, I got to hurry. This is what he said in verse 7. And with a loud voice he cried. He said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I assure thee by God that thou torment me not. And he said unto him, come out of this man, thou unclean spirit. That is how you deal with evil spirits. You tell them in the name of Jesus, get out. You don't have to ask their name. You don't have to ask their origin. You don't have to ask if it's a legion. Just tell it to get out in the name of Jesus. I'm tired of this weirdness that goes on. But look at verse 15. This is the result. If you look at verse 15, they came to Jesus and seeing him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion, he was sitting, he was clothed, hallelujah, and he was in his right mind. That's a sound mind. A sound mind. Hallelujah. That's what God wants for us. He wants us to walk in peace. Walk in a sound mind. No bondages. No baggage. Hallelujah. Nothing oppressing us. Nothing making us heavy. I told you there's times you get up and you just feel the blues. Every problem in your family, every problem in your life. I mean, it's just like, what are you going to do about this? And what are you going to do about this? And what are you going to do about this? And what are you going to do? And you're just like, oh my gosh. Jesus, come quickly. Have you ever, you ever felt that way? Like, I just wish the Lord would come back because there's just too much going on. You need to open your mouth and you need to speak to it. Just like I did that day in in my van. I said, in the name of Jesus, fear, leave me right now. You know what happens? He has to go. Amen. Amen. The name of Jesus has been given for us to use to cast out devils. Amen. Did you get anything out of that tonight? Hallelujah. Let's just lift up our hearts to the Lord. Father, we just... We praise you and we thank you for your wonderful, powerful name. Thank you that it's been given to the church to stand up against, to resist the devil. We don't have to give him any place. We won't give him a foothold. But God, I thank you that through that name, he has to go. Through the power and the authority in the name of Jesus, he has to obey us. And we can put him on the run. And we just give you praise and honor. We give your name all the glory. It's so full of power. It's so, so high and lifted up. And it's recognized as the most superior name in all of the universe. And we worship that name and thank you for all that you've given to us, your church. All that you've given to us, your children. Thank you for giving us victory and authority where we can occupy till you come. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Aren't you thankful? Hallelujah. I'm so thankful. And I'm so free. Let me tell you, Jesus wants you free. He wants you free. He doesn't want you living like that. He wants you to have liberty and peace and joy in your life. And it's yours as you exercise authority in that name. Glory to God. I pray you got something out of that tonight. Amen. If you're watching and you want to be born again, I want to encourage you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I receive Jesus into my heart, into my life. I call on the name of Jesus to save me. Thank you that there's power in Jesus 
to make me free from all sin, guilt, shame. I am free now and I'm a child of God. You've made me clean and holy and righteous through the cleansing of your blood. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus as I've called on him to save me tonight. Thank you for saving me, making me a brand new person. I'm perfect in Christ. I'm a brand new creature in Christ. All things are gone and passed away, but through Jesus, now everything is new. Lord, I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, write us and let us know because we want to pray for you and we want to help you in your journey with the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. It's not going to be long. We're going to see him face to face. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we want to receive our tithes and offering. Ushers, ushers are in the aisle. Uh, you can text to give 84321. Uh, just a few announcements. Didn't y'all enjoy Brother Jerry Seville yeah. Sunday? I tell you what a treasure and what a blessing that word was to us and just, uh, just the fellowship with him. What a, what a precious gift. To the, to the body of Christ. And we were just so, so thankful that he came to minister to our church. Um, just a few announcements. Sunday night is our Holy Ghost service. So be here at 6 p.m. It's going to be powerful. Then our youth have a hangout night, May 20th. Um, you can find out more information after church. The last day to sign up and pay is May 7th. Ladies Bible study is going to be May the 2nd. That's a Tuesday at 10 a.m. at Archibald's restaurant here in Menifee. We're going to have breakfast, and I'm going to share a word. It's going to be a great day. Uh, neighborhood Outreach, hallelujah, is this Saturday, and uh, it's going to be at Rome Hill. That's a neighborhood in Lake Elsinore. Tomorrow at the church, we're bagging groceries. Is that correct? Are we bagging groceries at the church tomorrow? Okay, and then that's going to be at uh, 11. 11 o'clock at the Hemet building. And so on Saturday at 9 a.m., we're going to load groceries at the Hemet office. 10 a.m., meet at Lowe's parking lot. And then at 11 a.m., uh, we're going to uh, minister there at Rome Hill. It's going to be a really great day of, of uh, evangelism. It's going to be a powerful day. And then Christian Foundations is Sunday, Sunday at 9 a.m. And then in Him Youth Bible Study is every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We got a lot of good things going, amen, at our church. We love you guys so much. Oh, one more thing. Look, I made a big note and I almost forgot it. So the, the, the school here next Wednesday night, May 3rd, and on May 24th, they have graduation events. Next Wednesday night's a gradu uh, some kind of graduation event, and on the 24th is actually their graduation. So those two Wednesday nights, we will not have any in-person service. So next Wednesday night, we won't be here. But we will record a service, and it'll be uploaded on Thursday. So, and the same will go for the 24th. We will not have in-person Wednesday night service, but we'll record it at another location, and then post it on our YouTube channel on that Thursday. So. Praise the Lord. Thank God for our, our building. Hallelujah. To where we're re redeemed from these problems. Hallelujah. So don't be here next Wednesday night. Watch next Thursday on YouTube. All right. We love you. God bless you. Good night.